lot of excitement in the Tata Motors table right now because the curve is finally getting out into the market. And to talk about that and a lot more is with us, uh, Shailesh Chandra. Shailesh, thank you so much for being with us. It's a pleasure as My always. pleasure. Uh, let me start out by saying the curve, it's taken a long time in the making. Uh, there was uh, a, the pandemic period where all the work was uh, done as well. That experience and that collaboration between all three design studios. Uh, talk us through how that that achieved that entire thing was achieved as such. See, uh, actually, it has not taken a lot of time. <laughs> Frankly, uh, when you come with any new top hat, uh, these are like three-year program and yeah. all. We did in a record time of, if I'm not wrong, about 25, 26 months, and that is a rapid program which happened in the time of pandemic. Uh, of course, the collaboration of all the design yeah. studios globally. Um, it went through, you know, multiple sketches, iterations, uh, what is, you know, the, you know, the minor details and minute corners of the curves and all that you have to give uh, that got discussed. I remember that it went through at least three iteration, including the clay models which were made uh, till we felt that this is aesthetically looking very appealing now and uh, justifies uh, what a stylish, you know, good looking coupe would be. So we went through that journey. It was a difficult period, but uh, I must give credit to the design team, which uh, really worked in a very collaborative way along with engineering, because there's always a challenge on the engineering side and you're not always able to uh, fully convert your idea into engineering specs because of the engineering side challenges. Yeah. And there was a huge collaborative work, openness of engineering team to take certain challenges of uh, meeting the styling requirements yeah. and all. So very satisfied with whatever progress we made in that period. Right. Uh, well, the curve enters a segment where uh, there are established players, uh, though it the body style makes it uh, kind of a different product or a standout product. Uh, your thoughts on how that, I mean, the, the compact SUV segment where it is going to be positioned in, uh, how, how is that journey going to be for you? Because you are sticking out your neck and bringing in a new body style in uh, a compact SUV segment. Yeah, see, that is what Tata Motors has been. Uh, mid-size SUV segment, compact SUV, this is the mid-size SUV yeah. segment that we are talking about is a very congested segment, right? And this is the segment which is growing the fastest also. Uh, we have, historically, if you see, we have disrupted always uh, with a new concept in uh, the segments in which we are even if you see the SUV journey of Tata Motors, early 1990s, bringing a concept like Sierra, introducing yeah. the lifestyle SUV concept, which was uh, Safari. And then even the recent ones, if you see Nexon, Punch and all have created segments, right? They were new kind of cars in the segments in which they entered. So that has been our legacy. So when we enter a crowded segment, we globally see what is really changing. And we saw that uh, SUV coupe as a body style is growing very fast and especially right now you are seeing this in the premium SUV category more and more and it is more familiar right. as a body style right. in that segment. So why not we democratize hmm. by mainstreaming an SUV coupe body style in India? That was the whole thought process right. and especially when you are entering such a crowded space, it is always good to go with a body style which is uh, different because yeah. customers in mid SUV segment are less of first time buyers, more an upgrader. Right. These are discerning customers. They have gone through the journey of owning a car and they understand this buy is not only, you know, keeping utility in mind, but also emotions, right? And utility aspect in curve are many. I mean, I can keep on talking about the boot space, etc., etc., yeah. the size, shape, but also the emotional part where these kind of customers are looking for something which increases their status. Uh, it helps, it gives them a feeling that as they are succeeding in their life, they are owning something which is exclusive. Right. If you go give again the same run of the mill body style that is available, then it does not give you the feeling of your exclusivity also. Right. So we thought that this segment is ready right. for a new clutter breaking body style. And given the trend globally, it is it is going to happen very soon. Somebody has to start. We started that because it is globally in premium SUV segment. You are seeing that why that premiumness and aesthetic appeal should not come in 
the mid-size SUV segment and that has been the thinking. So there is no hesitation as such as to SUV Coupe will be the only one. Now you have another manufacturer also getting into the same segment, uh, the SUV Coupe segment. It will come, see, because see, once you, once you introduce something, somebody does it first. Yeah. And then there will be people who will follow because I would have been more scared if this was not seen globally. This is growing globally, so it is not, not in, it is not misaligned with the trends that you are seeing globally. When SUV was growing five years back or six years back when we were devising our strategy, we were seeing the growth of SUV. That time SUV was what, one fourth right. of the market. But that time you have to keep watching how shifts are happening globally and if you keep your focus on that, things will happen. So it will take, it, it will take its time for the customers to understand and typically the demand keeps growing over a period of time. Unlike in a conventional body style, the demand goes up and then over a life cycle it goes yeah, down. Exactly. That's what we have seen for Punch, that's what we have seen for next one. Once you introduce a new concept, it grows over a period of time and that right. is what. Uh, also, you, you're talking about democratizing the SUV Coupe or, yeah, you know, uh, there are other different body styles that you have in your lineup as well. I mean, the upcoming, uh, mm. I'm hinting towards the upcoming bits. Uh, the Sierra, which is completely different in terms of right. that. Uh, right. Will those also be attempts to democratize a, a different body style altogether? Yeah, I mean, see, Sierra is still a comfort in the comfortable zone right. of a boxy SUV. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there it was more about also bringing back the legacy in the modern form. Right. Sierra was a car which, were ahead of, which was ahead of its time in 1990s, yeah. right? And that was a very unique concept you know, experimented in the country and possibly the time is now to, uh, you know, that experiment to be hugely successful. Right. And it is coming in, again, living to its uh, basic concept of being slightly ahead of time. In this segment, uh, you know, which will be kind of between mid and high SUV segment, this will create, a, you know, a very different kind of uh, exclusive feeling right. for a customer. Uh, so there's a bit of legacy, there's a bit of modernity, all combining in a more understandable body style, which right. is more conventional SUV from a boxiness perspective, right. although it is not conventional when you see the car actually. Right. Still, it is uh, very different than the lot you see on the roads. Right. Yeah. Uh, then subsequently, what happens to cars like the Harrier and the Safari? I mean, those have been your flagship models for uh, quite some time now. What happens to those two cars? What is the future of them? Yeah, those cars are going to really grow very fast in the future because you are seeing the trend of uh, uh, the growth rates right. moving from a smaller SUV to a mid SUV and then it will go to the high right. SUV because that is the upgrade journey right. of a customer and uh, all the people who are buying today mid SUVs would possibly move to the high SUVs. So there is clearly a very high growth expectation of Harrier Safari. Today Harrier Safari is only offered in diesel right. variant. Uh, going forward, next year, mid of next year, hopefully we should be bringing the petrol version also. Right. Uh, and it will come with electric version also, yeah. uh, early next calendar year. So therefore, there's a lot of action which is going to happen in Harrier Safari and therefore I'm very excited about this segment. It, it, very interesting. I think it, that just segues into me asking you about electric cars. Uh, it, it's been uh, quite a long journey for you. I mean, from the Nexon to uh, the Tiago, the Punch, the Tigor and now the Curve. Uh, and going forward, of course, the Harrier, the sales uh, have increased. I mean, the quota of sales from all these cars have increased. Uh, do you see a change in body style? Because right now it's, I mean, there's just one hatchback and one small sedan that you have. But do you see the premium hatchback segment getting into uh, the electrification segment at all? Because that's, again, that's, you know, that it's a concept that was shown, the Altros EV. Uh, but no journey as such till now because the concentration obviously moved to a different body type. Yeah, so you know it is a sequencing of the cars that you launch uh, depending on the life cycle stage at which it is. Right. It is you might have a upcoming facelift or something where you align yeah. the effort together, and therefore the sequencing is done in that fashion. Also, you see which of the segment will give you uh, a new price point. Right. You know a new body style where you, it gives you an opportunity to enter a new segment before you get into places where there can be overlap. Right. So it's a combination of all these factors, basis which we have decided the sequence. Right. 
we have always said that Altros EV is going to come. Uh, let's wait when it comes. <laughs> I will not give a date, but uh, we are committed to bringing Altros EV also. All right. So, uh, I think one thing I wanted to ask you about the curve EV now, uh, because that's what uh, is the fresher of the lot. Uh, with Nexon being there, you having dedicated customers to Nexon, people will want to upgrade to say a curve. Uh, and there will be first time buyers of the curve as well. Mm. What are your thoughts there? I mean, what is the thought sentiment there as far as um, buyers profile is concerned? I mean, will they be upgrading from a, because a punch will, a punch EV will upgrade to a Nexon, you know, as you said earlier, will, will you see that, um, that kind of uh, movement with the EV as well? You know, uh, specifically talking about curve, I would yeah. say in general, uh, these will, you know, you know, ice world also, if I, I may just use curve as where it gets positioned is, it is for the upgraders. Yeah. All those people who had been buying smaller cars, which are less than 4 meters, typically would like to upgrade to a 4.3 meter mid SUV. Yeah. And therefore, this is a car mostly for them. These are upgraders. Uh, you know, succeeding in life, they have owned a CUV or a compact SUV or a subcompact SUV and then they see that there is an opportunity to grow. And as you rightly said that there will be say a fraction of it who will also be first time buyers. So that's the kind of profile that we are seeing where curve becomes a logical car, you know, where you were a young buyer because typically we have seen that yeah. uh, two third of the buyers of a Nexon would be uh, would be a young customer, right. you know, 35, less than 35 years of age. Uh, and therefore, they reach a life stage where they have a family, they are succeeding in their life and they also want to do with their families, you know, right. more outdoorsy experience, excursion yeah. and all. Where Curve, if you see from a utility perspective also, it fits the purpose right. with a bigger boot where you can go more outdoor trips and all. So generally, that is how Curve is getting positioned. When you see segments of EV also, this is the kind of trend that you will right. see. Yeah. Uh, possibly... I would say it is too early for a punch EV customer to shift because sure. it is just yeah. one year. Yeah. Uh, typically, a car is upgraded after, say, a period of five years, six years and all. You still don't have that phase coming, right? Yeah. Because Nexon was launched, say, four years back. Yeah. So, possibly now you'll have those early customers who would like to start upgrading. Right. But you will see in curve when we announce the price uh, that the price will be pretty close to what a petrol 80 in this segment is. Oh. And therefore, you are for the first time you will see a price parity hitting, right? Even for a large battery size. So far, it was true for a smaller 30 kilowatt battery size and less, but now right. it is becoming a reality here also. So therefore, I would say actively, a petrol 80 mid-size buyer would also look at right. EVs because it is... Uh, less with range anxiety and all it is right. a big battery pack and also i believe that therefore you'll see all kind of actions happening in this segment well, and it's great i think uh, that's also the push that the industry overall needs my final question to you then is about uh, your sales expectations obviously and how do you see uh, the electric sales pan out after this and the share or the percentage share of overall sales no see we i don't want to give any specific number here right. but uh, any car that we launch or any car that exists in our portfolio, the expectation is that it should be among the top selling cars right. uh, in their respective segment. And this segment is big, space for many. Uh, we hope that with this unique, exclusive kind of an approach that we are taking from a body style perspective, it will uh, definitely succeed. I also acknowledge that it is a new body style. It will also grow over a period of time, more prominently as we have seen the journey of Nexon and Punch. Uh, so, I am very hopeful uh, in EVs particularly, it is breaking uh, the residual barriers which existed. Not only the uh, range anxiety is going to go down, this will be the largest battery pack in these, this segment. Mm -hmm. It will have price parity, it will have charge times which are much faster. You can do 150 kilometers in just 15 minutes, you know, when you take a break. In 40 minutes, you can do 10 to 80 percent charge. So, a lot of new barriers are being broken. So, I am very hopeful. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Shailesh. It was Thank great you. talking to you. Thank you and so much. And all the best for the curve. Thanks. Uh, sir, we'll take one custom uh, thumb. Thumb um, is it? Right here only? Yeah, right here. Yeah.